did Prophet Muhammad have a submarine? Was he a Jack Cousteau? The border between the Pacific and Atlantic Oceans is like a line between two worlds. It's as if the two oceans meet at an invisible wall, which does not let them flow into each other and mix their waters. Why on earth does it happen? It is impossible for a man impossible. to discover and write a truth that science has discovered only in this age. Was he connected cell phone with uh, Jacques Cousteau? Did Jacques Cousteau give him the message, say, look, there's a barrier here, and he put it in the book? Come on, people think. He has, he let, has free let free the two, the two bodies, bodies of flowing, of flowing water. water. This is the Dean Show. Assalamu alaikum, greetings of peace. How are you guys doing? If it's your first time watching the Dean Show, subscribe right now. Hit that notification bell. Keep coming back where we got exciting programs for you. Ahmed shared this next video with me. Ahmed's a great brother, an amazing brother, loves the dawah. And he thought that this would be something great. This next video, which talks about one of the miracles in the Quran, that if we can get somebody to do a documentary on this, the same way this not yet Muslim did, he broke down the science of this miracle that's mentioned in the Quran. So there's three things that I'd like to accomplish here. One is the person who's already been investigating. He's already been asking, she's already been asking the question, what's the purpose of life? Why am I here? The last thing that they wanted to look at was Islam, but Islam just makes sense. And it has all the evidence to prove that it's from the creator, but they're like on the fence back and forth. What he's going to say, she's going to say, going to say, you know, my parents going to say society, you know how it goes, all the social pressures that maybe inshallah, this can be a catalyst where they can go ahead and take that bold step. And I'll help explain what that is at the end to the person who is now first time exposure and wants evidence. Okay. And someone said, watch the Dean show. Now you're watching the Dean show. And after this, here's some evidence. This is one point of evidence. This is just one evidence and proof that's mentioned in the Quran to prove that it's from the creator of the heavens and earth because it couldn't come from a man living in the desert who couldn't read or write, but was known as al lamin the trustworthy. Now listen, uh, one more. And the Muslim, the one who is already, who's living Islam, but he's also vacillating between two worlds, the dunya and the akhirah having a hard time establishing his salat and prayer. He needs, a, he needs an extra jolt, right? An iman boost, inshallah, this can be that. So let's go ahead and watch this, comment on it, and then also connect it with the ayah, the verse that talks about this miracle, this sign, because the Quran, the verbatim word of God Almighty, is full of them. So let's go ahead. This is an amazing video that breaks down the science of one of those signs, miracles. In the Quran. So when you look at the seas and oceans on the map, you might think that they just flow into each other. It seems like there's only one big ocean and people just gave different names to its parts. Well, you'll be amazed how vivid the borders between them are. The border between the Pacific and Atlantic oceans is like a line between two worlds. It's as if the two oceans meet at an invisible wall, which does not let them flow into each other and mix their waters. Why on earth does it happen? We know for sure there is no invisible wall inside and water is water. What could interfere with its mixing? The thing is that water can be different too. The Atlantic and Pacific Oceans have different density and chemical makeup, the level of salinity and other qualities. One can see by their color that they are far from being the same. The borders between the two bodies of water with different physical and biological characteristics are known as ocean clines. Haloclines, borders between waters with different salinity, are the most spectacular, and this is what we see when the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans meet. The famous explorer Jacques Cousteau found this when he was deep diving in the Straits of Gibraltar. The layers of water with different salinity looked like they were divided with a transparent film, and each layer had its own flora and fauna. Haloclines appear when the water in one ocean or sea is at least five times saltier than in the other. You can create a halocline at home if you pour some seawater or colored salty water in a glass and then add some fresh water on top of it. The only difference is that your halocline will be horizontal and ocean haloclines are vertical. If you remember a couple of basic things from physics, you might argue that a denser liquid should finally end up lower and less dense higher. If that were true, the border between the two oceans would look not like a vertical line but as a horizontal one, and the difference between their salinity would become less obvious the closer they got to each other. So why doesn't it happen here? Well, first, the difference in density of water of the two oceans is not that great for one of them to get down and the other to rise up, and yet it's enough to not let them mix. Still, another reason is inertia. One of the inertial forces known as the Coriolis force influences objects when they are moving in the system of axes, which in its turn is moving too. In simpler words, the Earth is moving, and all the moving objects on it will be acted upon by Coriolis force, deviating from their course. As a result, the objects on the Earth's surface don't move straight on, but deviate in clockwise order in the northern hemisphere and counterclockwise in the southern. 
but the Earth is moving slowly. It takes a planet a whole day to make a full circle around its axis. That's why the Coriolis effect gets obvious only in long time intervals, with cyclones and ocean flows. And this is why the direction of flows in the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans is different. It also doesn't let them mix. Another important difference between the two oceans' water is the strength of molecules' connection, or surface tensile strength. Thanks to this strength, molecules of a matter hold on to each other. The two oceans have a totally different surface tensile strength, and it also doesn't let them mix. Maybe they could gradually start mixing with time, but as the flows in them have opposite directions, they just don't have time to do this. We think that it's just water in both oceans, but its separate molecules meet for just a short moment and then get carried away with the ocean flow. Don't you think, though, that only the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans don't get on well with each other? There are a lot of places on the planet where water in the two seas or rivers doesn't mix. There are also thermoclines, borders between water of different temperatures, like the warm water of the Gulf Stream and much colder North Atlantic Ocean. Chemoclines are the most amazing ones. These are borders between waters having different microclimate and chemical makeup. The Sargasso Sea is the biggest and most widely known chemocline. It is a sea within the Atlantic Ocean which has no shores, but you've got no chance not to notice it. Let's have a look at some other spectacular clines on the planet. Did Prophet Muhammad have a submarine? Was he a Jack Cousteau? Because now we're going to connect it with what's mentioned in the Quran. Now, this is not something nebulous. It's something very lucid and clear. And it is in a book that was compiled over a span of 23 years, piecemeal. And we have it today. It's a living miracle. It's a sign for those who are looking for the truth. Now, you can go ahead and be remiss in this and just brush it off. And this is not something like Nostradamus, vague attempts to try to guess something. And then a person guesses a thousand and one things and a thousand of those things are wrong completely. And one is kind of okay. No. See, whatever Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, whatever he was told and whatever he conveyed was 100% accurate. Just one thing if you find of a contradiction in the Quran, it can't be from the creator of the heavens and earth. We're specifically focusing on this sign, on this in the Quran. How did, now we're going to get into connecting it, and let's see, for the person, is their first time, A, being exposed to this? First time being exposed to Islam, the Quran? This can be a catalyst for you to investigate further than the person who's already been vacillating back and forth and you know looking into it and it makes sense the whole concept of the creator that he's one and alone worthy of worship you've investigated the life of prophet muhammad you've seen the moral teachings of the quran you've seen many of the evidences god willing this kicks it off and we can take this this next step together and then the muslim also vacillating back and forth between the dunya and ahira and not establishing salat maybe this can also be an iman booster now let's see what the quran actually says regarding this barrier that prevents the two from mixing he has, he let, has free let free the two, the bodies, two bodies of flowing, of flowing water, water, water meeting, meeting together, together. Between, between them is a barrier, is a barrier which they do not do transgress, not transgress. the expression the of the verse has a mind-blowing style for the verse informs us that the seas do not mingle with one another despite all storms and huge waves Yes. This is translated from the Science original confirms language the, the Arabic. Of the Quran as it always We're getting the meaning been, into the English. And proves that it is the word of Allah. It is as follows. This is one, just one of the proofs. The fringe How would this man know that? How Captain would he know Jacques a man Cousteau, in the desert? Who is famous for underwater research, explains the results Cousteau? of his investigations Come on, think about, about it. water barriers as follows. We were investigating of some researchers' judgments that put forth that there were some barriers that separated different masses of the seas from each other. As a result of various studies, we saw that the Mediterranean Sea has a peculiar natural level of salinity and density. At the same time, it has specific life forms. Then we analyzed the mass of water in the Atlantic Ocean and saw that it was completely different than the Mediterranean Sea. However, these two seas, which merge at the Strait of Gibraltar, yeah, the mine, the were mine. supposed to be equal or at least near to equal in terms of salinity, density, and life seeker. forms that they had. However, these two seas have different structures even in places where they converge closely. Upon our investigations, we came across an event that amazed us. 
there was a great water curtain at the merging point that did not allow these two seas to mix. The same kind of water barrier was found by German scientists at Bab al-Mandab, where waters of Gulf of Aden and Red Sea converged in 1962. In our later investigations, we witnessed the existence of the same kind of barrier in all merging points of seas that have different characteristics. This amazing fact, which amazed Captain Cousteau, about the waters that do not mix up, though seas converge, is explained with the following verse in the Quran 14 centuries ago. He has he let the word of God two Almighty bodies of flowing water, water, water meeting, meeting together. together. Between, Between them is a barrier, is a barrier which, which they, they do, do not transgress. Not transgress. Another kind of water barrier on Earth is seen at bays and deltas, where the freshwater rivers flow into the seas. Rivers that have the utmost possibility of mixing into one another because of their surface and bottom currents never mix with salty water in places where they fall into seas. If Allah did not put the law of not mixing up between these two waters, the freshwater rivers on Earth would mix up with the salty seawater, and the living creatures within them the and their environments the would be only... annihilated altogether. The Quran attracts attention to the miracle of this not mixing of these fresh and salty waters in another verse as follows. Now, it is he who has, has let free the Pay two bodies, bodies of flowing of water, water. One palatable and, and sweet, and the other salt and bitter. Yet has he made a barrier between them, prevents them from a partition from that is forbidden the two. to be passed. The barrier. Yes, the fact that the seas do not mix with each other and the fresh water rivers do not mix with salty waters shows the infinite power of Allah. It's being expressed 1400 years ago in the Quran proves that the Quran is the word of Allah. You want evidence? You got For evidence. It is impossible to base this information on a man's personal discovery who lived at that age. It is also impossible to base it on all people's discovery who lived at that age. It is impossible for a man impossible. to discover and write a truth that science has discovered only in this age, on his own, 14 centuries ago. Only recently. Therefore, the Quran cannot be the word of man. It is the pre-eternal word of Allah, cannot. who is the creator of lands and skies. It's your decision now. You got to think. You got to clear your mind of any prejudices all the negative stereotypes and all the negative things that you've been taught because the truth is always going to be attacked. So let's get that out of our minds. If you're humble, a true seeker, asking the creator of the heavens and earth to guide you and you're here, hey, this is a sign. And this is one of those signs. Was Prophet Muhammad, who's the last and final messenger sent to mankind? And again, again, I always repeat this. When you accept Prophet Muhammad, you automatically, you don't exclude Jesus, Moses, Abraham, and all the preceding messengers who came with the same message that Prophet Muhammad came with. Worship one and only one God. They were for that time. He is till the end of time for you and me right now living. He's a mercy to all mankind. And he brought the guidance, the Quran, not to worship him, not to worship a stick, stone, a bone, a human being or anything in creation, but to worship the one and only creator of the heavens and the earth and to live, to be a morally upright human being. Simple message, easy to understand. So again, before we conclude, did, Mo did Prophet Muhammad, did he have a submarine? Was he connected, cell phone with uh, Jacques Cousteau? Did Jacques Cousteau give him the message, say, look, there's a barrier here, and he put it in the book? Come on, people, think. Did he have a drone? Maybe he went up and he looked over. Did he have a lab, a chemistry lab, that he can go ahead and take this water and put it to the test and figure these things out like it was broken down by this not-yet-Muslim, non-Muslim in this video? So these are things really to ponder and think about. Now, let's go ahead and finish it off. For that person who's like, I've had enough, Eddie, that's it. We can die tomorrow. Because it's not promised. It's not promised that you'll reach tomorrow or at the end of the day and you're ready. And you know about the description of the hellfire in the Quran. So you want to avoid the hellfire. You want to get to paradise. And you want to be connected to your creator. 
You want to be thankful to your creator. Go ahead and repeat after me because now is the time. If you're going to pick any time, do it right now. Seize the opportunity. Repeat after me. Let's do this. That you declare that there's nothing worthy of worship. You've already looked into Islam. You looked at the evidence. This is just another proof on the abundance of proof compounded over and over. And now you're ready to take that step because why delay it any longer? And then at the same time, you now you're ready to live your purpose. So let's go ahead. This is that first step that a person takes. They take the shahada. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasulu. That you bear witness, that you testify, you swear that there's nothing worthy of worship except the creator of the heavens and the earth. That he's one and alone worthy of worship and that you testify and swear that Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, is his prophet, his messenger. He's the seal of the prophets. And if you were a Christian coming along, that you also testify that Jesus, peace be upon him, was the son of Mary, who was a slave and servant of God Almighty Allah. That's it. You're taking that first step. And for, for all those out there who are going to continue the journey, continue to explore, continue to seek, seek guidance from the creator of the heavens and the earth to guide you. you got to be sincere. you got to be genuine. Put your prejudices to the side. Also, if you have any more questions, call us. 1-800-662-ISLAM. Operators are standing by to answer your question. I want to thank Ahmed, Sheikh Ahmed, for sharing this with us. May God Almighty Allah put this in your scale of good deeds. And for everybody out there, now Muslims, again, who are on the truth, hopefully this is a, a boost, a jolt to get your iman up. Start taking this deen seriously because this is mentioned, but there are also other things mentioned. The consequences of not fulfilling your responsibility in this life. The consequences of not living the true purpose of life. You don't want to take this deen as a joke. Get well grounded in it, live by it, and look towards the ultimate goal, and that's the hereafter. That's Jannah. That's where we want to be. Set the GPS to Jannah. Thank you guys for tuning in. Subscribe if you haven't already. Hit that notification bell and share. Share this far and wide. Get in on, on all the rewards. Support us on our Patreon page. We'll see you next time here on The Dean Show. Thank you very much. Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum.